Hi guys, welcome back to Introduction to Rust. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be building a game of Pong using the Piston Engine as well as the OpenGL Graphics Library. All right, so I've already built our project. We want to bring in the dependencies, however. So first we need the Piston Engine itself. Then we'll need our Piston 2D Graphics because Pong is a 2D game. Then we'll need our Piston Core Gluten Window and our Piston 2D OpenGL Graphics. Now we want to jump back into our main.rs file and bring in all of our external libraries and then we want to make our imports so first I'm going to bring in standard process because we're going to be working with processes then I need to bring in piston window window settings so that we can set up our window then we'll need the event loop event settings to set up our event settings and events so that we can iterate through our events then we'll need our button from input our key from input our press event our release event our render arguments, our render event, our update arguments, and our update event. Then we'll need our gluten window. This allows us to create an OpenGL window. And then we'll need our GL graphics, which contains our OpenGL data and OpenGL, which gives us the versions for OpenGL. Now we want to create a structure called app. Inside of this, we will have a field called GL, which will connect to our GL graphics type. Then we'll have our left score, as well as the left position and left velocity. This will correspond to the left paddle. Then we'll have the right score, the right position, and the right, right velocity, which will correspond to our right paddle. All these are I32, by the way. Then we'll have ball X and ball Y, and velocity X and velocity Y. And all four of these will correspond with our ball. Now, if I wanted to write a more full-featured application, I would probably split these off into their own objects. But for now, this should do perfectly fine. Next, we want to create an implementation block for our application. Inside of it, we need a render method. This method will take in a mutable self, and then it will take in our arguments, which will be a reference to our render arguments. And then immediately, we want to have an import for graphics so that we can easily get to it inside of this function. Now we want to make some constants. So we're creating colors. These are F32 arrays of four. Each number corresponds with a color. So the first number is red, the second number is green, and the third number is blue. So our background color will be the color in the background of our window and our, whereas our foreground color will be the color that we paint our paddles and our ball with so now we're going to create a variable called left which will be a rectangle square this takes in scalars for x and y as well as size and we're just going to make our x and y zero and then we're going to make the size 50 so that it actually has some width then we want to create a variable called left position and this will just take our self here from our, our struct and cast it into an f64 we'll do the same for our right and right position and then for our ball we also want it to be a square we don't want it to have any specific x and y values, but we want it to be a square of size 10. And then we want to do what we did for our positions for ball x and ball y. So these are going to cast our i32s into f64s for the rendering. Then we want to call self.gl.draw, and this is a method that's included inside of our OpenGL library. This takes in our args.viewport, and then it takes in a closure which takes in c and gl. C being the context and GL being our OpenGL graphic renderer. So inside of this closure, we first want to clear our board and apply the background. We run this method called clear, which takes in the color that we want the background to be, and then the actual renderer, which is the GL. Then we want to create a rectangle. This will be our foreground color. This will be on the left as well, and it will have a transform of negative 40 and then our left position and then of course we're going to be rendering with this with GL as well. So for our right paddle things are going to be slightly different on the transform. We're still going to color it with the foreground color and we're still going to put in the right variable here but we also need to transform it by args.width so the width of the actual args from the viewport as a f64 and then we're going to subtract negative 10. now finally we want to render our ball with the foreground color put in ball inside of here and then we're going to transform it by ball x and ball y and of course we're rendering it with gl as well so the best way to explain what's actually happening here is first we are actually defining our paddles as squares and then we're using this transform to stretch our paddles downwards towards the bottom so that they actually are 
rectangles rather than squares. This makes our paddles render as rectangles rather than squares and then we'll use our game logic to sort of make them appear to actually be rectangles rather than squares as well. All right so that's it for our render method. Now we need to create an update method. Now our update method will be where all of our game logic lies. So we're taking in a mutable self so a mutable version of our struct up here and then we're going to take in our update args which are sort of like our render args except made for updating and now we're going to put in the actual logic for our paddles and for our ball. All right so the first part of our update function is mainly to make it so that our paddles work properly. So our first two if statements these two right here are what check to see if our paddles are about to go off the screen. So for our first if statement we're checking to see if our left paddles velocity is equal to one and if the left paddles position is less than 291. In other words it's going off the bottom of the screen or we're checking to see if the left velocity is negative one and the left position is greater than or equal to one. In other words it's going off the top of the screen. If that happens then we want to increment the actual paddle so that it comes back onto the screen. So as soon as the paddle goes off the screen just slightly it will be incremented back onto the screen. We do the same for the right paddle and it's the same check so we're checking if the right velocity is equal to 1 and the right position is less than 291 or the right velocity is negative 1 and the right position is greater than or equal to 1. And then we also increment the right position with the right velocity. The next part gives our ball some velocity. We just want our ball to be moving in the x direction always so we increment it with our velocity x. So then we want to check to see if the ball has gone off of the right side of the screen. We want to check to see if the ball's x position is greater than 502. If it is we want to then reverse its velocity in the x direction. In other words if it's going right and it hits the paddle then it will automatically go to the left. If it's going right and it misses the paddle and goes off the screen then when we reset it, it will automatically be moving towards the left paddle. Then we check to see if ball y is less than our right paddle's position or ball y is greater than our right paddle's position plus 50. In other words, we check to see if our ball has gone past our right paddle. And if it has, then we increment our left score plus 1. Then we have a little statement here that says that if our left score goes up to or equal to 5, then we say left wins and then we exit the process. And if we do go past the right paddle, then we want to reset the ball at 256 for its x and 171 for its y. The second if clause is the same thing that we did up here, except now for the left paddle. First we check to see if the ball is moving off the left side of the screen. If it is, then we automatically reverse the velocity. Then we check to see if it has a less y value than the top of our paddle or a greater y value than the bottom of our paddle, in which case we increment the right score by one. Then we check to see if the right score is greater than or equal to five, in which case right wins and then we exit the game. Otherwise we reset the ball like we did up here. This final part here is to allow our ball to bounce off of the top and the bottom of the screen. So we say here self.ball y plus equal to self.velocity y. So we're giving the ball velocity in the y direction. Then we want to check to see if the ball has hit the bottom of the screen or if it's hit the top of the screen. If it has hit either one then we just reverse the velocity. So now we want to create a method to handle when the person presses the button down. This method is called press. It takes in our mutable self, so our mutable app structure, and then it takes in arguments, which is a reference to our button enum. We want to use an if let binding to destruct our arguments, and if the pattern is similar to a reference to button keyboard, then we want to take the key out, and then we want to match on key. All right, so if key is up, so if we're pushing the arrow key up, then we want the right paddle's velocity to move negative one, if key down, then we want the right velocity to move by 1. And if key W, then we want the left paddle to move negative 1. And if key S, then we want it to move 1. And if we have a different key, then we just want to not capture it at all. Now we also want to have a release method. This is exactly the same as our press method except for one minor difference. So again we're going to run an if let binding on args to see if it equals our button keyboard key pattern and if it does then we're going to match on key and if key up was pressed but let go then we want to set the right paddle's velocity to zero 
And we want to do this for all of the keys. So if, for instance, the player is hitting up and then they let go, then we want to immediately stop the velocity. All right, so now we want to jump into our main function and actually build up the window and make the game work. First, we're going to bind OpenGL to OpenGL version 3.2. Then we're going to say let mutable window, which is a gluten window equal window settings new. The name will be Pong. The dimensions will be 512 by 342. And then we're going to insert our OpenGL here. Then we'll have exit on escape be true so that if an individual hits the escape key, then it will exit the window. Then we want to build the actual window and we want to unwrap it so that we can get back the actual value. Now we want to instantiate our app structure. Let mutable app equal app. Our GL is our GL graphics new OpenGL. So this will be bound to our OpenGL buffer. Then we want to set our left score equal to zero, our left position equal to one by default, left velocity equal to zero, right score equal to zero, right position equal to one, right velocity equal to zero, and then our ball x and y will be zero with its x velocity being one and y velocity being one. Next, we want to create an events variable. This will be bound to events new and we'll pass in our events settings new. And we're going to use a wallet binding to see if events.next with our window in it is equal to the pattern of some e. And basically, this is our game loop. Essentially, this loop will continue to iterate through as long as we have a new event. We take out e from the sum from events.next and then we want to have an if let binding for e.render arguments and then this will call app render on r. Then we want to have an if let on sum u for e.update arguments and then we'll call app.update on our reference to u and we'll do the same for our press arguments and then we'll call app.press and then finally, we'll do the same for release arguments and we'll call app.release. This will wire together all of our different functions and have them iterate over and over and over again inside of our loop. All right, so this is our completed Pong application. Let's run it and take a look at what we have. All right, so here is our game. You can see that I can move a paddle by hitting up and down and I can move the other paddle by hitting uh, W and X. And you saw just there, the ball went through the right side of the screen. And it now went through the left side. And I've deliberately made it so that the paddles move rather slow and the ball moves fairly slow. Though, honestly, for this type of screen, it's actually not as slow as I thought it would be. So all of our elements are actually rendered so all of our elements are actually little squares. Even our paddles are actually squares. But because we've extended them down in the rendering engine, the ball actually treats them as though they're rectangles rather than squares. Also, you can see all of the logic that we programmed directly into it. Happening here as the ball hits the bottom, it's going to bounce up and change direction. And if it goes through the right side, it will automatically start heading in the left direction. And the same is true for the left side. So if it goes through the left side, let's just let it go through. It will automatically start heading in the right direction. Also, you can see that our background is sort of this uh, green color and then our paddle is sort of a blue color. So one of the really cool things about the Piston library and about a lot of the OpenGL libraries in Rust is that we can directly call GLSL, the shader language, with our library. And for those of you who know anything about OpenGL, you'll know that this is kind of a big deal. It makes it really easy for us to put shaders and stuff into our programs. So for instance, if I wanted to put any kind of shader into uh, Pong, I could do that fairly easily, though that's outside of the scope of this tutorial. And you'll see here that left one, so we get in the console that left one. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. And if you disliked it, then download it as much as possible. Have a good night.